Welcome to the Leather Journey and also my Whips in the Dungeon channel. The longer version of this video will be on the Whips in the Dungeon channel and the shorter, more condensed version of the video will be on the Leather Journey. So if you see it on Leather Journey and you're curious about uh, the extra information that's in the longer video, just head over to my other channel and uh, check the video with a similar similar but a little different title out and you can pick up on that additional information. So how do you break in a whip? In this instance we're going to be talking about a match set of bull whips uh, but really uh, most of this information applies to any whip. I recently got a match set of whips from Peter Jack in New Zealand and I was sick with pneumonia at the time and they stayed in their box for over a month. Not good for any whip, but it is what it is. Now I'm on the mend and I need to break these whips in. So the first thing I did is I took them out of the box and you can see they're kind of shaped like they've been in a box for a while. So what happens? Well, first thing we need to do is condition them. Uh, and I usually only condition a whip maybe a couple times a year, but when it's brand new and I'm breaking it in, I'm going to condition it almost every time before I throw it until I get it broken in. Okay, so while I'm conditioning it, I'm going to talk to you about some of the things you don't want to do to break a whip in. You don't want to manually manipulate it. What, is, what do I mean by manually manipulate it? Well, it's stiff, right? So you don't want to be working it mechanically to, to loosen the plaiting up, to loosen the belly up, because you could, you could damage the whip or damage the bolster. So what do we want to do with this whip? Well, we want to break it in by throwing it. We want to get some mileage on this whip. And the more it's thrown, the better it's going to behave and the more it's going to act like a whip. The other reason you want to throw it a lot is because everybody has a little bit different style of throwing. You want this whip to break in to your style of throwing for it to develop your muscle memory so that when the whip's broken in, it just becomes an extension of your arm. Okay, so, so we're going to throw it. I've got two and for 24 years, I've thrown just with my right hand, my dominant hand. And in the last year, I've been throwing two hand. So I've actually never broken in a match set before. I've only broken in single whips. So for the people that throw two handed, they're going to naturally say, well, you want to throw two handed to break that whip in. And probably every so often you want to switch hands. So you can, so the whip doesn't favor one hand over the other. Okay. Uh, and I've gotten much better with my left hand, but my left hand still feels a little awkward and the whip doesn't feel like it's doing exactly what I want it to do. So I'm going to actually take a little bit different approach because what I discovered after 24 years of throwing right-handed, when I moved over to throwing left-handed, a lot of that muscle memory from my right hand quickly transferred to my left and my left felt pretty good right away. So I'm actually going to break my whips in throwing with my dominant hand because I want that whip to feel, both whips to feel comfortable in my dominant hand with my throwing style and of course every day as I break it in throwing single handed I'm also going to do some time throwing two handed. So I'm going to use those same four techniques to break it in. I want to throw some bow and arrow. I take it back. I'm only going to use three techniques for the bull whip. I'll use bow and arrow. Uh, I'm going to throw it some over the shoulder because that's another technique we use because I want that whip to roll out straight and finish. I want it to finish on its target. Okay, consistently in the same spot. And as it breaks in, that pattern will get tighter and tighter. It's kind of like 
scoping in a rifle at the rifle range. As the swift breaks in, it's going to get better and better. Now, we're not going to throw a bull whip horizontally in the dungeon. We're going to throw it overhand with a Ford figure eight. So I'm just going to use that same Ford figure eight, and I'm going to throw this whip X number of repetitions, say 50 reps. Then I'm going to switch, and I'm going to do the same thing with the other whip. I'm going to throw it the same number of times with a bow and arrow. I'm going to come off the shoulder the same number of times. I'm going to throw it the same number of reps with the Ford figure eight. When it starts feeling better in my hand, I'm going to start throwing at either my sheepskin or I've set up an eight inch tambourine. The tambourine gives you an audible as to, can I throw this whip? Is it broken in enough that I can consistently throw it in an eight inch circle? Okay, this whip hasn't been out of the box, but maybe a week or so I've only thrown it a half dozen times and already I'm able to pretty consistently uh, feather that tambourine. So it's going to break in real quickly. You need to do it the same thing with both whips. And you can see it's broken in enough that with my dominant hand that's been throwing for 24 years, I could throw either one of these whips in the dungeon. The question isn't the dominant hand. If I'm going to use two-handed, the question is, can I get my left hand to hit the tambourine? And I'm not there yet. So I'm still going to keep working these whips. Work, work, work every day. The more mileage I get on these whips, the quicker they're going to be ready for the dungeon. So when are these whips ready for use in the dungeon? When they roll out cleanly and finish on target, when I can roll them out and put them consistently inside an eight or six inch circle and hear that consistent sound coming back off the tambourine, then that, ready, that whip is ready to throw. Uh, predictably, it'll be ready to throw quicker with my dominant hand, then it will be ready to throw two-handed, but that's partly because my two-hand journey is still a work in progress. Okay, so this whip has really got to be broken in and I have to be comfortable with it, confident with it, before I'm gonna throw two-handed because I don't have that confidence in my left hand yet. I, it's getting better, Moodstone enjoys it, I wouldn't throw with anybody right now other than my primary whip catcher two-handed because I'm just not that far enough into that journey. So to summarize how you break a whip in, you break a whip in by throwing it in your style so it develops a muscle memory and breaks in to you. So it becomes an extension of your arm. What you don't do is manually manipulate it. Once it gets broken in, I only recommend conditioning it maybe a couple times a year. I do the fall almost every time before I throw it. The fall will get conditioned regularly all the time. Uh, but in the break-in phase, I do condition my whip almost every time before I throw it with just a little uh, a light coat of conditioner. <coughs> and then I throw, 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 throw. As always, thanks for watching whips in the dungeon, and especially following my Leather Journey channel. Remember to subscribe, ring the bell, leave an appropriate comment, and thanks for watching.